In this video, I'm going to be exploring how margins are underutilized. And you might be going, I use margins all the time, constantly on almost every single selector has margins on it. And yes, we use them for spacing all the time, but how often do you use margin auto other than containers? Like margin left, margin right, auto, do you, how often? Just containers maybe? We're really, we're gonna be pushing it. We're gonna be seeing the different possibilities of that. And also once you get into the world of Flexbox and Grid, how the margin top and bottom auto can be a game changer in setting up your layouts. And it's not just to center something vertically, you can do a lot more with it than just that. So that's what this video is going to be all about. Hi there, my name is Kevin. And if you're new to my channel here, we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. And as I said, in this video, we're going to be exploring the underutilized margin auto, um, usually more specific than just margin auto period. Uh, but it's really something that can help you come up with more complicated layouts with more simple markup. So I think it's a really useful thing to learn. Let's go and check it out. Here we are in VS Code. Now I'm gonna set up my navigation uh, pretty quickly here just because I want you to really see how it's set up. If we look in the HTML, it's really, really simple. I just have one list. I have my, I have my header, I have my image and navigation, and then I have my uh, a standard, pretty standard list there. And I've already turned off on my nav list, the lift style and my margins. And actually we don't need that line height of three on there. Um, there we go. So we get something that looks a little bit like that. And the first thing I'm gonna do is come on my header and do a display flex here, display flex. And so that sort of breaks everything, but then we can come on to my nav list. And on this one, we also want a display of flex and it starts looking a little bit better. Um, but this is where a lot of the time you'll see that we have to split up the navigation into multiple pieces. And sometimes that's actually the right thing to do. It really depends on the context of the navigation. Um, so, it, you know, if it is, say, you have your main navigation list and then you have like social media links or something, but it is showing up in your header, you see that on sites all the time, that should be a separate list. That should not be part of your main navigation. Um, but here, I just want to look at how we can do it because um, it really shows the power um, of using margins with Flexbox. And even this first part's not so much based on Flexbox. It's something that you can do without Flexbox, but Flexbox helps because we can very easily get things next to one another. Uh, but you could technically do the same thing with floats if you needed to. Um, but here, okay, so we have our navigation like that. And actually what I'm gonna do is on my nav list, let's do a couple things here. Uh, let's start with my nav, which was just my nav. I'm gonna give that a background of pink and padding of really small, just so we can see it in a second. So we can see there's my nav, uh, which is this one right here. And then I'm gonna come on my nav list and I'm gonna give that a background of light blue and uh, we shouldn't need any padding on that. So there we can see that my nav list is inside my nav. And because my header is display flex, uh, you'll notice that the nav itself here is not full width. It's stopping right here because um, whenever something's a flex child, it's gonna shrink down to the smallest it can get, or not the smallest, but it's gonna sort of match the width of its content. Um, it's a little bit like having max width on something. So by doing display flex, it's shrinking down because if I didn't have that display flex on the header, you can see it's stretching the whole size because a nav is a block level element. Block level elements by default have the width of 100% on them, so they're matching their parent. So we have that width of 100%, but that does not exist anymore. So we get down to here. Um, so if I do want to do this trick, one thing I'm gonna have to do on my nav itself um, is we could do, there's two different ways. I could either do a flex basis of 100% saying that it wants to grow. Um, so it wants to be 100%. Now it can't be 100% because I have my logo, but flex basis is always the ideal width. If there's not enough room, it's not gonna take it. Um, this could change if you did have flex wrap on though. The other option is you could do a flex grow of one. And I think this is the better solution. It will look exactly the same, uh, but by default flex grow is zero, meaning it won't grow, but flex shrink is always on. Anyway, I'm not gonna make this a big flex box tutorial. I have a whole series on flex box if it's something you'd like to dive more into. Um, so here my flex grow is making it grow and take up all the available space. So that is really important for this to work. If I didn't do this, my next steps that I'm gonna do would do nothing because there'd be nowhere for these items inside to move. Now you could 100% do these with classes on these items as well. I'm gonna skip that step. And what I'm gonna do is say that my nav 
list li. So nav my li is inside my nav list. But then I'm going to say nth of type. And I do have seven items in here. So if you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I choose the, I'm going to choose the, well, let's start with the seventh one. And I'm just going to give it a background color so we can see it, light green. And I always encourage, if you're learning stuff with CSS, um, to always be giving things background colors. And actually, let's give this one, that's light green. Let's give this one teal, which should be a little bit different. I'm going to make this one the sixth one right there. So we can, just so we can separate the sixth and the seventh one. Um, and what I'm going to do just for now on the seventh one is I'm going to do a margin left of auto. And this is just going to make it shoot all the way to the other side because it's putting all that margin on the left side. And this is why the whole, you know, if you have a container, you give it a width, margin left, margin right, auto, margin right, auto, it, you know, now it's centered within that space. This is true of anything. You do not need to be using Flexbox for this. It's just easy to get the items next to one another, which is why I used Flexbox. Um, so we can, you know, play around and use margins just to get this to go where we want it to go. Um, but the thing that's more interesting here, in my opinion, is when you do the same thing, but you're using it on not the last one. So if I did that here, margin left of auto, you want to guess what's going to happen before I hit save? So here it goes. It pushes all of them over. So that can be really, really useful. Uh, another thing, actually, let's just come here where I have display flex. I'm going to use the gap property just because it's really fast. This isn't perfectly widely supported yet, um, but it is coming to Flexbox, but it just adds the space between my items. Um, and even let's do a margin left of 1M as well, just to you know space things out. I don't think we need my blue background, and I don't think we need the pink background either. Okay, so we're left with something that looks like this right now. Um, so you can see that I've pushed those over. And it depends just where I'm putting my margin left on right now. And you can do this on any of them, and it's going to push all of those to the left. Uh, but where this also gets really interesting is, what if we chose my first one? Let's copy that. So one, this isn't like uh, other languages where one, you know, we start at zero with CSS, you start at one. Um, and here, let's just make this one pink now. So we can, whoops, not pinks, pink. And I'm going to turn off the margin left. So we can see I've selected the first one. And now if I put my margin left of auto, again, take a guess of what's gonna happen before I actually do this. Where do you think it's gonna go? Because it might surprise you a little bit. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna hit save and it's in the middle. Huh, what? <laughs> That's weird, right? Um, so what's happened is my home has a margin left of auto, but so does my login. And my login has the left of auto. And this is exactly what happens when you do a margin left and a margin right of auto on a container. It's taking the available space and it's evenly distributing it. Same thing's happening here. This has an auto, so it's automatically distributing the empty space here. And this has the auto, so it's splitting that space up across two different elements instead of having it all on the same element. That's wild, right? I think this is the, one of the coolest things. I love this so much. <laughs> so uh, that is just one of the ways you can use margin um, in an interesting way. And let's just turn off all these background colors because we don't really need them anymore. I guess we don't need the selector at all. And you start getting something like that. These could be styled up differently to look like buttons. And with one navigation, instead of having to you know, complicate matters in your markup, you could come up with something like this. And while I think this is really, really cool, um, we can push this a little bit more and this is where Flexbox does come into play and this could work in grid as well if you are using grid uh, but this would not work if you're not using Flexbox and what I'm going to do is my header I'm going to turn off my display flex we might need that anyway we'll see um, but what I'm going to do and let's turn off that margin left there and on my header let's give this a position of fixed because I see a lot of people asking me about navigations that are fixed on the side. So let's do fixed. Oh, you know what? I never even did a margin zero on my body. Margin zero. There we go. Um, it, you know, we have position fixed on this, so it wouldn't really change too much. But position fixed, uh, left zero, top zero, and uh, not right, bottom zero. And there we go, it's going like that, not perfect. But now we can go on my nav list itself, which is display flex already. So they're going next to one another. 
I'm still going to use flex on this because we're, we will need this to have a display flex. I'll turn it off after and show you what might, um, I'll show you that it doesn't quite work. Uh, but I'm going to change the flex direction on here to column. So they stack one on top of each other. And it also fixes the width of our, our whole uh, header area at the same time. Um, and this is just because the way position fixed works. It's again, it's a little bit like when you do a display of flex, it's shrinking and it's matching the longest word that's in here, which is, I guess, contact or maybe sign up. Um, so we have my navigation that's now vertical like this, but what if I want to space things out a little bit differently? Now, when we did it last time, one thing that was really important was that our nav was actually stretching the full width. So if we put this back on background, I shouldn't delete it. I guess I should have commented it out, but background of pink padding one pixel or we'll do two so we can see it a little better. Um, you can see that my nav is stopping here. It's not stretching the entire size, even though we do have a flex grow of one on here. Um, and the reason flex grow is not working is just because, well, we took off on my header, we took off the, uh, the flex box. So I guess I should have left that on uh, display flex. But once again, they're going to go next to one another. So I would have to do the same thing I did before flex direction of column, just so they're like that. And now my flex grow is actually making sure that it grows. And let's go check out this guy here. Um, this would be background light blue. Again, we need this guy to stretch and be the full size. For this, the, I think it's a bit easier. We can just do height 100% and it's gonna match the height of its parent. You could also make this a display flex and give this a flex grow of one. That would also work. Um, but I think this is just a little easier. So we're stretching the full size. So that's good because now that we're stretching the full size once again, let me turn off my padding. Oops, I had that in two spots. So now that we're stretching that full size, we can come to here and I can say margin top of auto. And look at that, that shoots all the way down to the bottom. And what if I did a margin bottom of auto? Well, it's going to be centered in that space. Now I did that auto on like, remember, this is my sixth one. So this is only on the login. So it's centering that between here and here, and it's pushing that one all the way down, which could be exactly what you want. Uh, but we could come in and if you wanted to do something a little bit different, we could put this as a seven and do that as the bottom. So now the last one has the margin bottom. This one has the margin top. So it's centering these two within the available space. Pretty awesome. Uh, alternatively, what we could do is like we did before, this one could have my margin, margin top, top of auto. Um, and then it would center this whole area. So the first one has auto and only this one here has auto and it's putting it there. And if you really wanted to play around with it, we could do on the seventh, a margin bottom of auto, and it would center that within this available space. I mean, the possibilities of this are endless. And this is one of those things where I think margins are completely underrated. So playing around with this, you can get some, with a really simple markup, you can get pretty far. Uh, but I do want to just show you that this is required to have Flexbox because if I take this off on my nav list, the whole thing breaks because it's going back to a regular list where they're stacked one on top of each other and which is normal, but margin top and bottom auto in the normal formatting context, it doesn't do anything. So here we're taking, we're changing the formatting context to display flex. All of a sudden margin top and bottom auto work the same way that a margin uh, left and right auto would work in all of our regular contexts where it's distributing empty space. And again, this would also work in flex as well. So I hope you learned a couple of things along the way there. I hope you like this. As I mentioned, if you're not super comfortable with Flexbox and a few of the things I was talking about there were maybe a little bit confusing or you're not super familiar with, I do have a series that goes over Flexbox. One of them looks at the container properties. One of them's looking at the individual properties we can put on items. And the third one is building a simple layout with Flexbox. The link for that one is in the description down below. So thank you so much for watching. A big thank you to my patrons for helping support me every single month. You guys are absolutely amazing. And of course, until next time, don't forget to keep on making your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.